Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, a ration point bulletin that's good news for all the ladies. Right now, until July 2nd, there's a brief holiday on points for the famous Kraft cheese spreads. Here's your chance to stock up for daily sandwiches that go to work or sandwiches that'll celebrate the 4th of July. Five kinds of the delicious Kraft spreads are point-free. Kraft pimento, olive pimento and relish spreads, and the tangy roca and Kraft Limburger spreads. They're quality spreads, nutritious, handy, and such good eating. They'll keep all right in your refrigerator, be a big help with sandwiches and snacks and salads. Remember, you have only until next Sunday to get five delicious Kraft cheese spreads without spending any ration points. get up to date on the great Gildersleeve. It's late Sunday night. The final week of campaigning is over, and only one day remains before the good citizens of Summerfield go to the polls to cast their ballots in the primary. It's been a hard week, but the decision now is in the lap of the gods, and candidate Gildersleeve is in the arms of Morpheus. Through his weary brain run troubled fantasies, and he tosses and twists in his sleep as he mm. argues with himself. If he gets the nomination Tuesday, he's as good as elected. That's nice. And if he's elected mayor, Eve Goodwin has promised to marry him. Yeah, that's nice. But if Eve marries him, Mother Goodwin comes to live with them. No, no. No, no. No, no, no. Brockmorton. dear. Oh, uh, no way. Time to get up, darling. Oh, Eve? No, darling. It's Mother. Oh, <laughs> Rock Morton. Come, darling. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. And I have a nice bowl of grape nuts waiting for you. Rock Morton. <laughs> Take it easy, Mother. Tomorrow is another day. But have you forgotten? What? This is your wedding day. No, no. Well, Marjorie, aren't you going to wish your uncle luck? Oh, Uncle Mort. Why, Marjorie? I'll never see you again. I just know it. Why, of course you will. Uncle, hey, Uncle, before you go. Little Leroy, what is it, my boy? Uncle, I'm sorry about everything. Sorry about what? What are you talking about? Come along, Buckbottom. Oh, but Mother, I haven't even said goodbye. Wait, there's Bertie. Goodbye, Mr. Gilsley. You're the best man I ever worked for, and that's a fact. Come along, Throckmorton. Now, look what you've done. Come along. Do you, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I know you. You're Judge Hooker. Answer the question. I object. Objection overruled. Do you or do you not take this woman to be your wedded wife? I guess so. That's better. And do you, Eve Goodwin, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? Of course she does. Don't you, Eve? No, Mother. She lady. takes him, Judge. Go on with the ceremony. Yeah. The ring, please. Oh. TV. You got the ring? Huh? Oh, oh yes. Yeah, the ring. Uh, let me see now. This ring. I have it here. <laughs> well? Uh, just get my glasses on here. That's funny. I remember just as plainly. Peavy, you're the worst, best man in the world. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> now, what do you know about that? Have you got the ring? Yes. There it was all the time, right on the end of my nose. It's, it's a wonder you wouldn't look there in the first place. Place the ring on the lady's finger. That's right. Now, I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> <laughs> Old goat. Two dollars, please. You may now kiss the bride. There's no time for that. We got to rush for the train. Train? What train? Where are we going? On our honeymoon. Hurry. Honeymoon? Eve, 
You don't mean Mother. Oh, I wouldn't think of going anywhere without Mother, dear. Mm. Uh, I can't go through with it. I can't go through with it. something, Leroy. What? I'm not married, am I? Are you kidding? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, of course I'm not married. We haven't even set a date for the wedding. Everything's all right, huh? Gee, just a bad dream. Hurry up, Bunk. Breakfast has been ready for an hour. Uh, don't go away, Leroy. Leroy. What's the matter? Don't leave me, my boy. Stay here with your old uncle. For corn's sake. Aren't you going to get dressed? Right away. I'll get right up and... <clears throat> uh. Where are my slippers? Slippers? Where'd you leave them? Oh, oh here they are. Hat! Oh, oh, gosh, I didn't mean to hit you, Unc. It's all right, Leroy. Perfectly all right. I forgive you. Huh? What a character. And my little Marjorie, my favorite niece... Good morning, my dear. Good morning, Uncle Mark. You're pretty late for breakfast. He overslept. Yeah, I overslept. I'm sorry. Uh, you're not leaving? Oh, well, I finished, and I've got a lot to do today. Oh, uh, sit down with me here a minute, my dear. You too, Leroy. I want to feel my little family around me. But I was going shopping with Eve and Mrs. Goodwin. Well, they're not here yet. Oh, here. Here's five dollars for a spring hat. <gasps> a summer hat. Whatever you want. Okay. Hey, what about me? All right, here. Buy yourself a football. Gee, thanks. Is it all right if I get a first baseman's glove instead and a belly protector? Hmm? <laughs> Anything at all, my boy. I want to see you children happy. I don't understand you this morning, Uncle Moore. Well, I... Good morning, Miss Gilsley. Oh, good morning, Bertie. What kind of nourishment you hankered for this morning? I need only the nourishment of your presence, Bertie. The nourishment of your warm, friendly smile. Yes, sir. With a few scrambled eggs on the side. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Bertie. And plenty of toast and coffee. I'll bet I can eat like a paratrooper today. Okay, I'll bring in the first installment. <laughs> oh, that must be Eve and her mother now. Oh, good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Mrs. Gregor. Oh, brother. Right in. Uncle Mort's just sitting down to breakfast. Oh, breakfast, Missy. We had breakfast two hours ago. Good morning, everybody. Hello, Eve. Uh, good morning, Mother. Hi. Uh, Sit down and have a cup of coffee while I have my eggs. Thank you. That would be lovely. Oh, Eve, if you don't mind, it upsets me to see food in the middle of the morning. Uh, just a few scrambled eggs, Mother. <laughs> now, Throckmorton, you're going to have to learn my little ways. Otherwise, how are we going to get along after you and Eve are married? Mother, really? Uh, Leroy, you tell Bertie I'll have my eggs a little later. <laughs> you know, Throckmorton and Eve, I've been thinking about you children. And do you know what I think you ought to do? What? Why don't you elope? Mother. That's what I do. I wouldn't wait. I'd get married right away. Oh, what a wonderful romantic idea. You stay out of this, Marjorie. <laughs> Mother, you're putting Clark Morton in a very difficult position. Just the position he wants to be in. I know men, they're always impatient. Now, I talked the whole thing over with Dr. Pendleton, and he says he can marry you Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday afternoon? Mother, that's day after tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Why, Dr. Pendleton? Dr. Needham is the man I go to for all that. Uh, Dr. Needham is my pastor. Well, I... I go to a different church, Dr. Morton. If anyone but Dr. Pendleton performed the ceremony, I just couldn't consider you married. Now about the honeymoon. Oh, Mother, this is ridiculous. Let's discuss one thing at a time, please. You're right, Eve. But there's nothing ridiculous about it. If you got married right now, I have a friend who owns a summer hotel, and you could get in before the season opens. Do remember Helen Pepper, Eve? She has that little place on Lake Vespucci. I don't want to go to Mrs. Pepper's hotel, Mother. You must learn to think of your husband's pocketbook, my dear. If you go to a hotel out of season, it will make a substantial saving in the cost of your wedding trip. When your father and I went to Niagara, the falls were frozen solid, but our room was only a dollar a day. <laughs> Why don't you wait till winter, Unc? Leroy, this is a grown-up conversation. Well, Leroy is my nephew, and he should be allowed to put in his two cents worth. That's not a bad suggestion, my boy. Yeah, I'd like to see the falls frozen solid. <laughs> Well, you won't be there, Leroy. Hot or cold, you won't be there. 
Well, you, you young people can suit yourselves about the honeymoon, but I wouldn't put off this wedding if I were you. But, Mother, why not? Why the rush all of a sudden? Yes, why the rush? Well, I can't explain it, but I've just got a feeling in my bones. Oh, now, Mother, those feelings in your bones. Don't laugh at my bones, Eve. I predicted World War II. And I've got a feeling that if you two aren't married right away, well, after all, neither of you are growing any younger. Mother. I think Mother and I better go now, South Morton. You just think it over now, and I'm sure you'll see it my way. It will be at our house, of course, South Morton. At your house, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Come along, Mother, for goodness sake. Will you call me later, Scott Morton? Yes, Eve. I think we ought to discuss this a little. There's nothing to discuss. Come along, Eve. Are you coming with us, Marjorie? Oh, yes, I'm already. Goodbye, Scott Morton. Goodbye, Leroy. Goodbye, Mother. Uh, say goodbye, Leroy. Goodbye, Grandma. <laughs> well, Uncle, you're all set, I guess. Yes, yes, I'm all set. She's giving you a nice break, isn't she, Uncle? Uh, how do you mean, my boy? Well, I thought you didn't get to marry her unless you won the election. Oh. Well, the election is in the bag. The paper says I'm two to one over Terwilliger. Yeah, Terwilliger's practically quit. That's the trouble with Terwilliger. He's yellow. He could still win if he'd put up a fight. Why, if I... Listen, Leroy, you go on about your business. I've got work to do. What kind of work? Never mind. You go out and play. Go buy a baseball glove or something. Oh, gosh, aren't you even going to eat your breakfast? Later, my boy. I've got some phone calls to make first. Run along, Leroy. Okay. Goodbye. Now, I'll start with the A's. Adams. Hello, Mr. Adams. Are you a registered voter? Well, vote for Terwilliger tomorrow. Oh, never mind who I am. I'm just a friend of good government. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Meanwhile, I have some swell ration point news for the ladies. Between now and July 2nd, five varieties of the famous Kraft cheese spreads are absolutely point-free. Here's your chance to stock up for the 4th of July weekend. Here's your chance, lunchbox packers, to lay in a supply that'll help you with that daily sandwich chore. There's Kraft pimento and Kraft olive pimento spreads, the tempting Kraft relish spread, Kraft Limburger for real He-Man sandwiches, and zesty roca spread, too. Everyone is wholesome, nutritious, and such good eating. When you're shopping, get some boxes of Kraft Dinner, too. This seven-minute macaroni and cheese is also point-free right now. Tomorrow, save time, save points by getting Kraft Cheese Spreads and Kraft Dinner. Hurry back to the great Gildersleeve, who by this time is a very uneasy man. It's Tuesday night, the polls have closed, dinner's over, and our candidate is down at his headquarters, biting his nails and wiping the sweat off his brow as he listens to the returns coming in. Terwilliger, 347. Gildersleeve, 693. That's the stuff. Quiet, Judge. Ninth Precinct, final returns. Terwilliger, 531. Gildersleeve, 1,539. Hmm. By golly, Gildy, it's a landslide. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Peavy's right, Judge. Terwilliger can still show some unexpected strength, you know. Well, uh, that seems to be all the returns we have at the present time. We'll bring you further returns Turn when they're off, available. Peavy. Meanwhile, stay tuned to WSUM for complete... Well, Gildy, the old fox has done it again. Done what? I told you I'd make you mayor, whether the people want you or not. I'm not mayor yet. Oh, don't be silly. You see the way the returns are going. Well, now, there's an old saying, Judge. Don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. And there's another old saying, Peavy. There's many a slip twixt the cup and the lip. Yes, and there's another old saying. Money a mickle makes a muckle. Yeah. <laughs> What's that got to do with this or anything else? Well, nothing, I guess, but it's an old saying. Well, <laughs> keep it to yourself. No, no offense, Mr. Gildersleeve. I merely offered an observation. Uh -huh. Our friend seems a little testy this evening, Peavy. You don't suppose his high office has gone to his head already? I'm tired, Judge, that's all. I've had a hard day. I'm sorry, Peavy. Oh, that's yes, all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. Where have you been all day, Gildy? I haven't seen you around. Oh? Uh... Well, I was down in the gas house district uh, doing a little last-minute campaigning, Judge. 
Yeah, the boys there told me it looked a little doubtful. Oh, you've got nothing to worry about. That's what you think, brother. Hey, what's that? What? That noise. It's outside in the street. I'll go look. Turn on the radio, Peavy. See if anything's happened. Crowd, Gildy. Gathering outside. According to final return. Although there are several precincts yet to be heard from, Mayor Terwilliger conceded the election to his opponent, Mr. Gildersleeve, at 8.45 this evening. Conceded? As soon as complete returns come through, we will relay them to you without delay. They're calling for you, Gildy. They want you to speak to us. I won't do it. Oh, come on. Come at the window. We want Gildersleeve. Come on, Gildy. Say a few words to them. Oh, that's the stuff. Quiet, folks. Quiet, please. Quiet, quiet. Here he is, folks. I give you your newly elected mayor. Hooray! What do you say, Gildersleeve? I demand a recount. That's you, Mike. Yeah, it's me, Leroy. Congratulations. Mayor Gildersleeve. Congratulations, Uncle Darling. <laughs> well, thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Gildersleeve. I never thought you'd make it, but you did. Thank you, Bertie. So, my uncle's the mayor and my aunt's the principal of the school. That makes me practically the prince of Wales. <laughs> Try to be a little quiet, my boy. I've had a very exhausting day. Oh, my goodness. Whoever that is. I don't want to see him. I'll go. I'll shoot him away. Good evening, Marjorie. Is your uncle home? Well, I'll tell him. Come in, honey. Oh. Well, he's dressing. <laughs> <laughs> he's dressing, Mrs. Anson. Well, I just wanted to congratulate him, but I can do it tomorrow. Is that you, Leela? Oh, don't let me disturb you, Throckmorton. I know you're tired. That's all right. Come on in. Throckmorton, I heard about your victory over the radio, and I just want to tell you I think it's wonderful. Oh, thank you, Leela. That's nothing, Mrs. Ransom. He's going to get married tomorrow. What's that, Leroy? Uncle Miss Goodwin, I'm going to get married. Leroy, will you run away, please? <laughs> uh, go upstairs and do your homework. I haven't done anything since September. <laughs> well, do something. Can I go out in the street and light a bonfire? Yes, do anything you want, Leroy, only not in here. You too, Marjorie. Come on, Leroy. Okay. Hey, let's go out in the fort and see if anything happens. Is that true, Throckmorton, what Leroy said just now? I don't know, Leela. I guess so. Tomorrow? Yeah. Well, Throckmorton, now, I've said this before, but I didn't mean it. I hope you'll be very happy, honestly. Why, Leela? Aren't I silly? <laughs> oh, I, I don't think so. I think you're one of the sweetest girls I've ever known. Oh, thank you, Throckmorton. Have you got a handkerchief? Huh? Oh, here. Uh, no. Let me. Oh, I ought to be ashamed. I'm pretty big to be. Nothing to be ashamed of? I feel a little myself. <laughs> I don't suppose you'll be having a very elaborate wedding, will you, Strathmorton? On such short notice, I mean. No, just the families, I guess. Mm, I thought so. If you'd had a church wedding, I might have just slipped in at the back for a minute, all by myself. I wish you were going to be at this thing tomorrow. Do you, Strathmorton? Might make everything seem a little more familiar. Mm. Oh, <laughs> you won't miss me, but I hope we'll see each other occasionally after you I mean, we aren't going to be strangers, are we? Never, Leela. You stand for something in my life. You stand for a... She's right in the living room, Mrs. Goodwin. Mrs. G... Oh, for heaven's oh, sake. Good evening, Throckmorton. I couldn't wait to run over and congratulate you. I want you to... Oh, I didn't know you had company. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, this is Mrs. Ransom, mother. Uh, she's an old friend of the family. Lives right next door. Uh, how do you do? I'm so happy to meet you, Mrs. Goodwin. Frost Martin has told me such lovely things about you. Really? Oh, yeah. And, of course, I know your daughter very well, but I must be running along. I imagine you'll be wanting to talk about the wedding and all. Well, there are one or two things. Oh, I'm you... sure there are. Any wedding is complicated, but these last minute affairs. Why, I... Goodbye, Mrs. Goodwin. Goodbye, Frost Uh, goodbye, Leela. Hmm. I won't mention this to Eve, Frost It might upset her. But, 
But there's nothing. But Neil and I are old friends. Just the same. I'll keep it to myself. I simply came over to congratulate you, Throckmorton. I want you to know that Eve and I are proud of you. I'll be proud to have you as a son-in-law. Well, I'll try to be worthy of you, Mother. <laughs> I'll try to be worthy of Eve. Oh, that's a fine spirit, son. Now, we better plan a few little things about tomorrow. Have you packed? Packed? I don't even know where I'm going. Well, you'll be going somewhere. I've already started packing for Eve. You better get busy this evening. I suppose so. Now, when you're packing, I wonder if you put in this little bottle of iron tablets. Eve needs them, but she won't admit it. Iron tablets? All right. <laughs> Make her take one before each meal. Before each meal. Yes. And, Doc Martin, be sure to see that you get plenty of fresh air. Oh, oh I will. Oh, yeah. And one more thing. Hey, Aunt, turn on the radio. Something's gone wrong. Huh? What are you talking about, Leroy? I don't know. But Mayor Terwilliger has conceded the election. Never mind, Mother. Let's listen to the whatever it is. Apparently, the unexpected has happened. But then in politics, the unexpected often does. Veteran observers were recalling the situation in California in 1916 when Hughes went to bed president only to find in the morning that Wilson had won. What happened? Anyhow, the fact is that belated returns from the so-called gas house district have wiped out Mr. Gildersleeve's lead and elected Terwilliger by exactly three votes. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? <laughs> I've lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rod Martin. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Oh, now, Mother, no use crying over spilt milk. I fought hard and to really do run. That's life. Oh, uh, that's politics. You gotta take the bitter with the sweet. You're very brave, Rock Morton. But I want you to know that Eve is brave, too. Eve will stand by you through thick and thin. But, Mother... And I'll stand by Eve. Eve. <laughs> Why, George, I'm going right over and talk to your daughter. Uh-uh. You stay right there. <laughs> I've got to talk to you. Oh, Scott Morton, I'm glad you're here. Come in. Your mother was just over at my house. I left her there. I know. I couldn't stop her. Mother's so impulsive. You uh, heard how the voting came out? Yes, darling, I heard. Come in and sit down. I uh, mean the final result. You heard that? Yes, and I think it's a shame. You deserve to win, Scott Morton. You really did. Well, it's the verdict of the people, Eve. We have to abide by it. That's democracy. That's what we're fighting for. But to lose by three votes, to think that just three people did... Oh, it's not fair. Now, now, Eve, no use crying over spilt milk. Let the best man win, that's what I say. You're a good loser, Scott Morton. I haven't much use for any man who isn't. Well, you made a wonderful showing, and I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you. I want you to know that. I'm just as proud of you as if you'd won. Uh, oh. Well, uh, I'm very grateful for your attitude, Eve. I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for your mother's attitude, too. You must forgive Mother, darling, if she's a little over-eager. I hope you understand. Oh, I do. You see, she's had to work hard, and her whole life's been wrapped up in us children. And now that Fred's in the service... I know. I'm afraid she still thinks of me as her baby. She wants me to have the best of everything. Naturally. And she thinks a great deal of you, Scott Morton. I think a great deal of Mother. Eve. Yes? You remember about six months ago? You remember when you told me I ought to run for mayor? I remember very well. You remember when I first asked you to marry me? You were very sweet. And you said, maybe, if I won the election? I remember. Well, I've lost Eve, and I'm ready to take my medicine. Oh, Rock Morton. You're such a dear, silly fool. Now, Eve, we made a bargain. (laughs) Rock Morton, did you think I meant that? We made a bargain, and I intend to stick to it. A bargain? Rock Morton, you make it sound so cold-blooded. Love isn't something you bargain with. But that's what you said. If I got elected, you'd marry me. But I didn't, Rock so... Morton, you're so literal. I only said that to make you try harder, silly. Uh, you mean... I never dreamed you'd take it literally. I certainly hope you don't think I'm the kind of a girl who would marry a man just because he was mayor. Well, no, only... And I hope you don't think I'd desert him just because he failed. Well, no, only... Ye gods, how's a fellow going to know where he stands? I mean, one minute, you say. Ralph Morton, let's not argue. Not now. Why not? This is as good a time as any. (laughs) Not now, darling. You see, I have something to say to you, Ralph Morton, and I don't know quite how to say it. Oh, you need to worry about me, Eve. I'm not one of those fellows that proposes to a girl, and then... Please, dear. 
This is something that's going to hurt you, I'm afraid. And I don't like hurting you. I'm very fond of you, Clark Morton. Terribly fond of you. What's more important, I respect you. I think you're one of the finest men I've ever known. I like you too, Edie. I admire you. And I hope we'll always be good friends. Huh? I know how you must feel, dear. This is sudden and it may seem unreasonable, but I've thought it over and I'm sure it's best this way. You see, Steve, if... uh, just wait a minute. Yes? Let me get this straight. You mean you can't marry me? I'm afraid not, dear. Stop, Morton. Can you ever forgive me? Oh, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, perhaps in time. Who knows? The pain will wear away and I can learn to forget. Hmm. <laughs> You're brave. You're so brave, Doc Morton. I'll go away somewhere. Grass Lake, perhaps. <laughs> you see, dear, there were so many things. After all this, Mother, my first duty is to her. You're right, Eve. That's what I like about you. You know your duty, and you do it. <laughs> I could see you were never going to be able to get along with her. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, I could tell. And then, too, I got to thinking these last few weeks, I... Well, I did a lot of things. Me, too. It occurred to me that... Well, that maybe this was just one of those things. Yeah, just one of those things. Just one of those things that was never meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> After all, when you come right down to it, we're not much alike, you and I. Not at all. I'm fat and you're... <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, it's possible that we just weren't meant for each other. Sure. Maybe it was a mistake from the start. Maybe we were foolish ever to think of it. Absolutely. Silliest thing I ever heard. Where do people get these ideas? Doc <laughs> Morton, let's face it. What? You don't love me, do you? No. Nah. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. How about you? I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. Great. <laughs> yeah. Eve. Yes? Uh, now that we're such good friends. Yes? How about a little kiss? <laughs> <laughs> good heavens, Doc Morton. This is where I came in. <laughs> The things I get into. Oh, brother, I need a vacation. We all need a vacation. So we're going to knock off for the next few weeks and play some camp shows and bond rallies. I'm starting out with Salt Lake City tomorrow night. This is our last broadcast this season. We'll be back again the first week in September at the same time and over these same stations. Before saying goodbye, we want to thank you for the encouragement you've given us through your letters and for your response to the government messages we've carried from time to time. To our sponsors, the Kraft Cheese Company, we're grateful for rare understanding and cooperation. And we want to give the credit due to all members of the Gildersleeve cast whom you've come to know. B. Benaderet, who plays Eve Goodwin, Shirley Mitchell, who plays Leela, Lorene Tuttle, who is Marjorie, Lillian Randolph, she's Bertie, Walter Tetley, Little Leroy, Earl Ross, who plays Judge Hooker, Arthur Q. Bryan, he's Floyd the Barber, and Richard Legrand, our Mr. Peavy. Thanks, too, to Claude Sweeten for his excellent music, to our writers John Wheaton and Sam Moore for their words, Frank Pittman for his direction, and to Ken Carpenter, the dean of all cheese announcers. Well, thank you, Hal. <laughs> Incidentally, the craft people have donated this time next week to the Treasury Department for a big bond program. There'll be a lot of stars, and it looks like a great show. Oh, fine. I'm sure it will be. Well, that's about all, folks, except I'd like to remind you that I made a new picture at RKO, and they're releasing it very soon in theaters from coast to coast. It's called Gildersleeve's Ghost. So do come around, and I'll haunt you. Yeah. <laughs> good night, everybody. Have a good summer. This is the National Broadcasting Company.